Welcome friends to a new session on pedagogic practices in natural science. Stating general instructional objectives and specific instructional objectives in terms of behavioral outcomes. Meaning, purpose and types of instructional objectives. By habit, teacher may focus more on the content of instruction than on the intellectual, emotional and performance capabilities the learner has to achieve by attending the school. Hence, formulating the goals and objectives, meaning the desired outcomes, is an important skill and essential requirement of teachers. All teachers need a clear idea of what constitutes goals and objectives in order to be able to formulate comprehensive and achievable instructional objectives. Objectives are the logical foundations of teaching learning processes. It is the first step of any instructional plan. They specify what the student should know and be able to do at the end of instruction. Objectives are potential goals. Objectives are the foundation upon which you can build lessons and assessments that you can prove meet your overall course or lesson goals. Stating objectives in early during the planning of instruction is of paramount importance for many reasons. Clearly defined instructional objectives steer efficient course planning. Identifying objectives as the primary step of planning instruction not only guide instructional process but also provide framework for measuring instruments for assessment of learning. Objectives guide the instructional process by synchronizing the planning and implementation of teaching, learning and assessment activities. A meaningful instructional objective communicates to students the desired outcome behavior of the learner exactly as the teacher intends it. It serves the following purposes. Give direction to teachers in the selection of instructional methods and instructional resources. Inform students why any content is to be learnt and to what extent. Students are much more likely to succeed if they understand what is expected of them from the beginning of the lesson. This empowers students to take up charge of their own learning. Provide scope for the question paper setter in the construction of tools for evaluation of students' achievement. The meaning of instructional objectives. Instructional objectives are statements of intended or expected specific learning outcomes after a period or course of instruction. Instructional objectives are statements that express the expected learning outcomes of the learners at the end of instruction. Instructional objectives are specific, measurable, short-term, observable student behaviors. Instructional objectives are the intended end results of learning stated in terms of changes in pupil behavior. Note that here the term behavior refers to mental and emotional as well as physical actions. Thus an increase in knowledge, a broadening of understanding, an improvement in a physical skill, a shift in attitude or deepening of appreciation are all changes of behavior. Stating a change in any of the above as an intended outcome of instruction can be labeled as instructional objectives. In summary, instructional objectives are statements of intended or expected specific learning outcomes. Types of objectives. There are two types of objectives, general objective and Specific objective. General objectives are very general statements which describe in implicit terms the overall aims of the total educational process. 
general objectives are summaries of the learning outcomes of teaching learning process. General objectives express the generalized behavior expected of the student as a result of schooling and instruction. General objectives are used by curriculum planners to indicate very broadly what the whole educational program intends to achieve. They are stated in broad terms to encompass a class or domain of student performance. General objectives are not explicit. It is the job of the teacher to convert these general educational objectives into specific instructional objectives. Specific instructional objectives will be more meaningful to teachers and students and help them to plan the teaching learning strategy. However, a general objective is logical than a specific objective if the area of study or learner behavior or content of learning is very broad. General objectives serve the following important functions. Describe the expected terminal behavior of the learner in broad terms. Example, to understand, to apply, to analyze, to perform, to use. Describe learner's terminal attitudes. Example, to appreciate, to value, to volunteer. Form a starting point for writing the specific objectives. This is a general objective can be broken down readily into many specific objectives. Specific objectives. Statements expressed in behavioral terms that identify the end product of instruction in terms of observable and measurable performance of students are specific objectives. Stating general instructional objectives. While preparing instructional objectives, keep in mind that we are making a list of expected outcomes of teaching learning situations. Be clear that we are not listing the learning experiences of the pupils. While preparing instructional objectives, we are listing the changes in pupils' behavior resulting from the learning experiences. Be clear that we are not describing what we intend to do during instruction. Be clear that we are making a list of the expected results or product of instruction. The point of orientation then is the pupil and what he is capable of doing at the end of the teaching learning process. Thus, preparing of instructional objectives will be easier if we continually ask ourselves what should the pupils be able to do at the end of the course that they could not do at the beginning? Methods of writing instructional objectives include general and specific formats. While general formats are more or less open-ended and permit flexibility, highly specific formats of instructional objectives delineates outcomes in very specific forms. There are two methods of stating objectives. Gronlund method, Majors method. We will refer to these authors in course of discussing the methods of stating objectives. Norman Gronlund proposed a plan for preparing instructional objectives in 1970s. Though there were further refinements to this method in the later years, the basic principles proposed by Gronlund remain the same. In this method of stating instructional objectives, the objective guides the instructional destination of an educational experience for both the students and the teacher. The outcome defines the objective by specifying the behavior that marks the achievement of the objective. Steps for preparing instructional objectives the following outline summarizes the general procedure for defining instructional objectives. Identifying the general instructional objectives, stating the general instructional objectives, defining the general instructional objectives, stating
specific objectives. The steps in identifying the general instructional objectives. To identify the general instructional objectives of the course, these points may be considered. Identify the general purposes of the course. Analyze each purpose of the course into definite statements of general instructional objectives. Analyze the content of the course topic by topic and add the instructional objectives suggested by content analysis. Examine the teaching methods used and add the instructional objectives resulting from methods of instruction. Consult lists of objectives published by experts and add those that are appropriate. Check the list of objectives against the various types of learning outcomes to be sure all important outcomes have been included. 6 steps for writing general objectives Step 1 Try to begin each general objective with a verb example appreciate know, understand, etc. You can preface your list of general objectives with a statement such as on the completion of the study the student will be able to Step 2 State each objective as learner behavior or learner performance not teacher intention or performance. Step 3 State each objective as learning outcome or a learning product rather than in terms of the teaching process. Step 4. State each objective so that it broadly identifies expected or desired terminal behavior. Step 5. State each objective at a level of general learning outcomes later to be further broken down into specific student behavior. Step 6. State as many objectives as are necessary to cover all the content or units prescribed in the curriculum of the course. Stating the general instructional objectives. While stating the general instructional objectives, note these points. State the general instructional objectives as intended learning outcomes. Include only one objective in each statement. State the general instructional objectives so that each encompasses a class of behavior that can be further defined by a set of behaviorally stated learning outcomes. Group the objectives in terms of types of learning outcome indicated by each objective. Stating specific instructional objectives. Groundlands had suggested the following guidelines in writing specific objectives. By following the six steps, first write the general objectives. Clarify each general objective by listing sample of specific behaviors which are put together accepted as evidence of attainment of general objective. Defining the general instructional objectives. The general objectives can be made further specific and definite by listing a representative sample of the specific learning outcome indicated by each objective, stating the specific learning outcomes in terms of observable pupil behavior. Start each statement with an action verb, consulting the professional literature for behavioral components of those concepts that lack common meaning, example critical thinking, creativity, social sensitivity and so on. 7 steps for writing specific objectives. Step 1. Consider each general objective separately for which you have to derive the specific objectives. Step 2. List below the general objective the specific objectives which break down the general objective into detailed learning outcomes. Each specific objective describes the terminal performance, the final behavior 
which students are to demonstrate when they have achieved the objective. Step 3. Begin each specific objective with a verb specifies student performance or behavior that is an action which is usually measurable and certainly observable. Step 4. Make sure that each specific objective is relevant to the general objective from which it is derived. Step 5. Refine the original general objectives if necessary having defined the specific objectives. Step 6. Check your specific objectives to ensure that duplication has been avoided. Step 7. Sequence your specific objectives. Five rules for stating specific objectives as per Gronland. Gronland has specified five rules for stating specific objectives. These rules are illustrated in this section. Rule 1. Instructional objectives should be stated in terms of student's performance and not teacher's performance. The objective should specify what the student will be able to do at the end of the lesson and not what the teacher had intended to do. Rule 2. The mere description of subject matter should be avoided. An objective should specify both the kind of behavior expected and the subject or context to which that behavior applies. Rule 3. Use action verbs. Use verbs that refer to any observable activity displayed by a learner. Rule 4. State in terms of learning outcomes instead of the learning process. Describe in detail the final outcome of learning, that is end product, and not the process of learning itself. Rule 5. An objective should not consist of more than one learning outcome. Example of Gronland's method of stating the objectives as learning outcomes. A list of objectives for a course or unit of study clearly conveys the intent of the course of instruction. This is accomplished by defining of objectives in two steps. Stating the general objectives of instruction as expected learning outcomes. Listing under each such objective specific behaviors that pupil is to demonstrate when they have achieved the objective. This procedure would result in statements of general instructional objectives and specific learning outcomes. For example, for the general objective of pupil understands scientific principles the specific behavior that student demonstrate will be describes the principle in his own words identifies examples of the principle states tenable hypothesis based on the principle list the differences between two given principles explains the relationship between two given principles Note that the expected learning outcome is concerned with understanding and that the statement is with the verb understands. Similarly, it can be noted that each specific learning outcome also states with behavioral verbs like describes, identifies, states, lists, explains, etc. These verbs will indicate what the pupils will do to demonstrate their understanding. Major's method of writing specific objectives. Robert Major has suggested the following criteria to be incorporated in stating every specific objective. It must include specific terminal performance of the student condition under which the performance is expected to occur, standard of minimum acceptable performance, an example of specific objective stated using major's method will be 
given the pencil paper and normal classroom facilities the students should be able to draw a diagram of longitudinal section of human eye and label the three layers of eyeball within 5 minutes correctly a b c d of writing objectives for the beginner majors approach is too specific and groundland's approach may require stating and identifying all the learning outcomes that specify the general course objectives hence a practical way to write objectives is to incorporate a b c and d as elements of all objectives accordingly every objective should specify four main things a the audience who who is this aimed at for example the learner will be able to b behavior what what do you expect them to be able to do this should be an overt observable behavior even if the actual behavior is covert or mental in nature if you can't see it hear it touch it taste it or smell it you can't be sure your audience really learned it for example the learner will be able to draw the diagram of longitudinal cross section of the human eye and label c condition how under what circumstance will the learning occur what will the student be given or already be expected to know to accomplish the learning for example the learner will be able to label the three layers of the eyeball if given with a diagram showing the cross section of human eye d degree how much must a specific set of criteria be met do you want total mastery 100% do you want them to respond correctly 80% of the time etc a common and totally non scientific setting is 80% of the time this is often called the abcds of objectives to get the abcd of objectives clarified let us see a few more objectives representing psychomotor cognitive and affective domain objectives psychomotor given a standard balance beam raised to a standard height which is the condition the student who is the audience attired in standard balance beam usage attire will be able to walk the entire length of the balance beam from one end to the other which is the behavior steadily without falling off and within a 6 second time span which is the degree cognitive comprehension level given examples and non examples of constructivist activities in a college classroom which is the condition the student the audience will be able to accurately identify the constructivist examples and explain why each example is or isn't a constructivist activity that is the behavior in 20 words or less which is the degree cognitive application level given a sentence written in the past or present tense which is a condition the student the audience will be able to rewrite the sentence in future tense which is the behavior with no errors in tense or tense contradiction that is i will see her yesterday that is the degree cognitive problem solving synthesis level given two cartoon characters of the student's choice which is the condition the student the audience will be able to list five major personality traits of each of the two characters combine these traits either by melding traits together 
multiplying together complementary traits or negating opposing traits into a composite character and develop a short no more than 20 frames storyboard for a cartoon which is a behavior that illustrates 3 to 5 of the major personality traits of the composite character which is the degree. Effective Given the opportunity to work in a team with several people of different races, the condition, the student, the audience will demonstrate a positive increase in attitude towards non-discrimination of race which is the behavior as measured by a checklist utilized or completed by non-team members that is the degree. Qualities of good objectives Keep the following qualities for the objectives you state. Effective objectives need to be complete with respect to all the aspects of the subject or unit. It must be complete in terms of higher order thinking skills and effective outcomes of learning. Appropriate to the general goals of instruction in school. Sound in terms of principles of teaching and learning and level of learning and development of the learner and learner needs in present and future. Feasible, realistic and attainable according to the level of ability of the learners, time and resources available. Relevant to the overall educational efforts. Open-ended such that even while directing the learning, they are not limiting the learning experiences. Delineate the student behaviors in observable terms. Shared with students. Hence, to be sure that you write quality instructional objectives, after writing the objectives, you may check the following. Does the learning objective stem from a course goal or objective? Is the learning objective measurable? Does the learning objective target one specific aspect of expected performance? Is the learning objective student-centered? Does the learning objective utilize an effective action verb that targets the desired level of performance? Do learning objectives measure a range of educational outcomes? Does the learning objective match instructional activities and assessments? Does the learning objective specify appropriate conditions for performance? Is the learning objective written in terms of observable behavioral outcomes? Please be aware of the following typical problems encountered when writing objectives and try to avoid such drawbacks. The objective is too broad in scope or is actually more than one objective. The objective does not list the correct behavior, condition and or degree or they are missing. Describes instruction, not conditions. No true overt observable performance listed. Let us summarize the discussion. We have discussed the stating general instructional objectives and specific instructional objectives in this session. Here is an assignment for you. You have already chosen one unit of biology in secondary school and conducted pedagogic analysis and written appropriate instructional objectives to a selected subunit. Verify the objectives you have written for the subunit in terms of the principles you have learned in this lesson. Identify and write as many general and specific objectives for the subunit as possible. Repeat the process for all other subunits of the identified unit. Here are some books for further reference. Designing Effective Instruction by G. R. Morrison, S. M. Ross, J. E. Kemp and H. Kalman published by John Willey and Sons 2010. 
Essentials of Educational Technology Unit 9 by S. K. Mangal and U. Mangal published by PHI Learning Private Limited, New Delhi, 2012. Developing Instructional Objectives Unit 3 Nurse as Educator Principles of Teaching and Learning for Nursing Practice by B. Franklin published by Jones and Barlett Learning, 2003. This is also available on the website samples.jbpub.com Thank you for watching this program. See you next time with a new topic. Bye.